Hi, my name is Sarish Sudhakaran and in this video, I'll show you the simplest way to read and understand an MTF graph or chart. Most of us don't have stores nearby where we can compare lenses. Even if we did, it's rare for us to have the opportunity or inclination to methodically test lenses in any scientifically valid way. Eventually, we all do need to test specific copies of lenses, but the lesser the number, the better. So what's so special about the MTF graph? If you know how to read it, you can find out four cool things. The resolution of lens or how sharp it is, how well it can resolve edge contrast or acuteness, how good the bokeh is, and at which aperture the lens delivers the best results. The advantages are obvious, and I'm here to tell you it's easy to read an MTF chart. Let's start with the basics. A lens throws an image circle, and the sensor must fit within it. We all know that. However, most lenses are designed to be sharpest at the center, but the really wide or cheaper or mass-produced ones tend to lose sharpness towards the corners. A telephoto lens or an expensive lens is expected to maintain sharpness throughout the width of the sensor. The furthest distance from the center of the lens is the corner. So these are our two end points, the center and the corner. The distance from these two points is half the diagonal of the sensor but we don't really need to care about that right now. A perfect lens will be sharp at the center and equally sharp all the way to the corner. This will be a straight line. The height is 1 or 100% perfection. There is no lens that achieves this. So even the best lenses go below this at the center. Then they usually fall off towards the edges, though there are exceptions. Now if you're like me, you'll say, wait a minute, there are four edges to a sensor. Which edge are we testing here? Ideally, you need to test all corners separately. If the lens is a good copy, the MTF chart should be identical. Unfortunately, most manufacturers represent the best corner. While some testing programs do average out all results for an overall representation, we work with what we get. Now, what exactly do engineers point the lenses at? They point at fine lines that are either parallel to the diagonal or perpendicular to it. They test both separately as a sort of stress test. A lens never performs equally well, so it's important for it to do well in both. The results you get from testing the parallel lines go like this, a solid line, while the results of the perpendicular lines will be slightly different and is always represented by a dotted line. This particular MTF chart is one of the best lenses on the planet, the Zeiss Otis 85mm f1.4. For all its beauty, it's still not perfect. With modern cameras reaching 8K, you really need to test lenses at 100 line pairs per millimeter, but few manufacturers do. Each manufacturer tests for what they think is important. Usually they top out at 30 or 40 line pairs per millimeter. Each line pair is a line and a blank space. Some manufacturers incorrectly write lines per millimeter, but that's just lazy writing. They point the lens at parallel and perpendicular lines that are 30 or 40 or whatever line pairs per millimeter, and a computer studies how sharp the results are. This line tells us how sharp the lens is, so it's also called the resolution line. The solid line shows how the lenses perform with parallel lines, and the dotted line shows how it performs with perpendicular lines. Notice how they are never the same, though theoretically they should be. Next, you'll notice most MTF charts have two pairs of lines. What's the other one for? There's another kind of stress test possible, and that's testing for edge contrast or acuteness. Think leaves in a forest. Can the lens tell each leaf apart? Can it draw the edge correctly so we can see each leaf separately? That's acuteness. In many ways, when people say a picture is sharp, they're probably talking about a picture with a higher level of acuteness rather than resolution. So a higher acuteness gives us the perception of sharpness. To test for acuteness, the manufacturers point the lens at parallel and perpendicular lines at a lower resolution, usually 10 line pairs per millimeter. The resulting line is almost always above the resolution line. Some manufacturers call this the contrast line, though I don't like to use the word because contrast has another better meaning. I'll just call it the acuteness line. So how can an MTF graph tell us about the sharpness and edge contrast of a lens? The higher the points for both, the better. The straighter they are, the better. The ideal lens would be just one line for all, but that's impossible. 
Here's a quick comparison between the Zeiss Otis 85mm 1.4 and the Zeiss Planar 85mm 1.4, both wide open. These lenses were tested by Zeiss at three resolutions, 10, 20, and 40 line pairs per millimeter. For simplicity, I'll erase the 20. First, let's study the resolution line. Notice how the planar resolution line maxes out at about 35% in the center, while the Otis clocks in at 70%. That's a large increase in resolution. However, the planar holds its resolution consistently, while the Otis drops off more steeply. At the corner, the Otis is about 35% for the solid line, while for the dotted lines it's much worse, at about 25%. The planar stops at 20%. There's no doubt which is the better resolving lens here. Now let's compare the acuteness lines. The planar starts off at 85% but drops off almost to 50% while the perpendicular results are much better. On the other hand, the Otis is almost at 95% and drops to 70% while doing well with the dotted lines. Since the Otis has higher values, it has the better acuteness as well. Not only is the Otis excellent at the center, but it also performs well for fine detail. Unfortunately, Zeiss has only published an F4 chart for the Otis and an F5.6 chart for the planar, so we can't really directly compare them. Yet you can see how they are very similar when stopped down. The planar is supposed to have the advantage here because F5.6 is around the diffraction limit for full frame sensors, but the Otis still beats it overall. There is no doubt which is the better lens, at least with regards to resolution and acuteness. If manufacturers showed us MTF charts for all apertures, we would be able to tell at which aperture a lens works best. Unfortunately, very few do. Actually, that's a good thing because it would get really tedious to read. Usually, lenses are tested at infinity focus, but the results will vary at close focus or any other focus point. It just wouldn't be practical or useful for either of us. Luckily, most have MTF charts at two apertures, either wide open and stop down. And this tells us a lot. Let's move on. I also said MTF charts can tell us about bokeh. Isn't bokeh supposed to be subjective? Yes. But the graph can tell us a lot. If the dotted lines are close to the solid lines, the bokeh is more uniform and will blend in better when out of focus. Obviously, the ideal bokeh is if both lines meet. If you look at the two MTF charts again, you'll see how well the planar does in relation to the Otis. Both have solid and dotted lines close to each other when wide open. The planar is slightly worse off, but it would be extremely hard to tell the difference in actual photographs without a side-by-side -side study. Many people praise the bokeh of the Otis, and you can see the two lines are as close as they'll ever be. So we've covered all the cool things you can do with MTF charts but there are some important no-nos. One, you can't compare charts from different manufacturers directly. They don't test these things the same way. Some only publish theoretical MTF graphs, while others publish tested ones. And there are a few that don't publish any at all. I list a few links of sites that do excellent third-party evaluations. Secondly, you can't compare a wide angle to a telephoto. A wide angle lens will always look worse, but that wouldn't really affect how it does its job. Don't trust the numbers on the MTF charts either. They're supposed to mean something, but since it's likely the data is fudged, we should not give too much weight to it. So a 0.8 on a Canon is not the same as a 0.8 on a Zeiss, or even if it is, we don't know it. Finally, even if you have MTF charts for each aperture, the ideal aperture might be one or two thirds of a way down or up. So don't look for the exact ideal aperture in an MTF chart. The best you can get is a general feel for how the lens might perform. Guess what? You have now learned to compare lenses that may not even be present in the same city or country you're in. Short of testing the lenses yourself, this is as good or as objective as it gets. I hope this video has helped you understand MTF charts and how to read them. By the way, MTF stands for Modular Transfer Function, not that you should care. I purposely avoided using many of the technical terms but most of it is useless to the average filmmaker. I provided links for you to read in case you want to dig deeper. Bye now.